go. Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, May 24th, 2017 meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Uh, before we begin, if anyone has uh, a cell phone that isn't silenced or turned off, would you please do so now? And if anyone wants to speak on any of these projects, um, we'll give us give a time for people to speak. And we'd like to hear your comments. But please come up to the microphone and state your name, as well as speaking into the microphone. Thank you. Um, we're going to start with uh, orders of conditions. Well, one order of condition. Uh, 62 John Parker Road and 52 Oxbow Road, Town of Falmouth. Jen. Yes, Madam Chairman, this uh, is an amended order of condition only to add 52 Oxbow Road to the project and removal of the dam and the spillway on that parcel. And this is the Coonamassett River Restoration Order of Conditions that was issued. Okay. And, and the quorum for that project is... Courtney, Maury, Betsy, Steve, and more. Nope. Jamie, Betsy. Oh, Steve, Jamie, Betsy. Courtney and Maury. Courtney and Maury. Sorry, I'll, Courtney. I'll move to accept the order as discussed. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? She looked at the wrong one. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you, Sorry, Maury. <laughs> she looked at the wrong one. I just realized I, I had five of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks for visiting. Uh, no, she was. Next on the agenda is minutes of May 17th, 2017. Has anyone read these? I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. We haven't seen them. Well, I, then. I know. I read them. Uh, this is May 17th. Yeah. May 17th. Yep. Yeah, I read them. They're okay. I approve them. Or uh, I'll vote, I'll move to approve them. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Well, you can't say aye. I'm picking them on the 17th, aye. Oh, maybe you were. Uh, no, you were absent. Okay, sorry. Sorry. sorry <laughs> okay, but there are four of us. Um, I just called for the vote, right? Yeah. <coughs> okay, unanimous. Got that, Susan? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Request for a continuance under a notice of intent. Shirley uh, Rothwell, 28 Drift Road, West Falmouth. This has been read into the record. Jen? It's been continued several times, too. Huh? Yeah. Yes, Madam Chairman. The applicant is requesting a continuance until, I want to say, June 14th, but let me double. June 14th. To June 14th? May I have a motion? Um, so May I have a second? Second. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> you got to get us up to speed. That's All right. Here we have a motion and a second on the table. Is, are there any comments from the board? Any comments from the audience on this motion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. So moved. 624, Mr. Chairman. 614. 614. Uh, John Ziza, 82 Waterside Drive, North Falmouth. No, this one has a couple, right? For permission to relocate six large boulders within an area of stones to open up three channels in McGansett Harbor. Jen? Yes, Madam Chairman, this has been continued. Um, it was opened, it was continued without being opened, and then um, they asked for one continuance after they opened it. They're still doing work. I told them it was okay, but July 19th, they've requested a continuance. Okay. So move. Second. July 19th. July 19th, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Any comments from the audience? Okay. All in favor of a continuance right. to July 19th, say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so moved. Um, Request for determination of applicability. Racing Beach Avenue Association, Inc. Racing Beach Avenue, map 3705012000, Falmouth, Massachusetts. For permission to repair the existing riprap by chinking voids 
with approximately six to eight cubic yards of stone and to rebuild the stairs using timber that will be removable for off-season storage. Jen. I don't know where that one just went. Um, hang on, Madam Chairman. Uh, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Okay, any questions on the board? Any questions yeah. from the audience? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so moved. Oh, there it is. Thomas uh, Malay, 23 Crystal Springs Avenue, North Falmouth. For permission to pump, fill, and abandon the existing cesspool, remove trees, and install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Yes, Madam <coughs> Chairman, we're recommending a negative two under the bylaw, a negative three under the state with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Okay, motion to second on the table. Any questions on the board? Any questions from the audience? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so moved. For those of you who don't know about RDAs, a negative determination is what people want to hear. Boatyard Condominium Trust, Lot 1, Falmouth Heights Road, Map 46B, 01005-001, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to replace the existing fence with new fencing, to remove a U, and to protect native planting. Yes, Madam Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until June 7th. So moved. A second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for a continuance. Any questions on the board? Any questions from the audience? Okay, all in favor of this continuance to June 7th, say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so moved. Request for a hearings under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are heard simultaneously under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. Okay, first is Robert Richards, 45 Little Neck Bars Road, West Falmouth, for permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, the existing building and construct a single family house on piers with concrete slab on grade, install a retaining wall, bluestone on slab, connect new pipe to existing septic tank, reconnect existing water and electric services, replace existing concrete walk with new four foot wide concrete walk, remove native trees and shrub buffer in coastal dune, undergo invasive plant management and restoration, install temporary sheet piles in coastal dune, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, Thank and you, landscaping. Jen. Yes, Madam Chairman, I will save any of my comments until after the project team's presentation. Okay, good evening, Mike. Good evening, Madam Chairman. Members of the Commission, for the record, my name is Michael Borselli from Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant, Robert Richards. Uh, Mr. Richards is here tonight. He's the applicant and who intends to uh, embark on this project and make this his home. We have also brought with us tonight our, our design team and our contractor. Uh, there may be specific questions that you want to direct to them. And I'll uh, introduce them, starting with uh, Jill Neubauer from Neubauer, Arch Jill Neubauer Architects. Um, I also have with me Teresa Sprague from Blue Flax Design. And I have Leon Pizanol from Pizanol Builders. And uh, Ezra Ambrose, he's a subcontractor from Ambrose Construction for contracting. They will be the contractor that would install the piling system. Um, helical piling system, if there's any specific questions for him. Um, uh, Chris Miller from Gilmar Architects will also be here momentarily and there'll be specific structural questions for him about the design of the Velocity Zone house. Um, so the property in question is number 45 Little Neck Bars Road. It is um, near Chappaquoy Beach, just south of Chappaquoy Beach. It has frontage on Buzzards Bay to the west. The wetland resources in question include a land in the ocean, a coastal bank, and a land subject to tidal action. Uh, 
coastal dune. And there is also a wetland system that is in this uh, olive color that was flagged and survey located and added to the plan. Um, that is just to the north and along the boundary of the existing gravel driveway. We provided data sheets for the wetland resource uh, delineation. Now, the existing conditions on the property are such that they include um, an existing gravel driveway, long gravel driveway from uh, Little Neck Bars Road leading up to uh, a parking area with a detached garage shown in this location. There's an existing home situated basically central to the lot. Um, the house and access uh, walkway to the house lead up a slope. The house is actually nestled in a dune. Um, this is a dune system. Uh, also, uh, in direct uh, location running through the house is uh, a line designating two uh, flood zones, VE21, which is west of the blue line, and VE20, which is east, designating a FEMA velocity zone, so we're in land subject to coastal storm flowage. So the existing house, as I stated, is situated in the dune system. The existing house has been there for many decades. It is a house, uh, two-story, traditional style home, um, not in any way FEMA compliant. In fact, the first floor is pretty much at grade, slightly above grade, at approximately ele elevation 14. Um, there's no provisions for f uh, construction of flood standards because, I mean, at the time there were just no standards back in the day. Um, it's withstood the test of time, but, um, you know, has undergone maintenance through the years. Um, but it is very susceptible to exposure from storms, um, waves, and wind because, of course, being in the velocity zone. So the plan, uh, in this case, that uh, we're proposing is to do a raise and reconstruct of the existing house uh, in a way that the new house is virtually in the same uh, footprint as the existing house, with some very minor um, deviations that are almost, they're really almost too subtle to really point out. They're, they're all slight jogs and changes that would be um, on a net result offset by other jogs in an existing house that won't be new structure. The, the dune in the area of the house is surrounded by um, sandy edges, uh, American beach grass uh, all along the edges. To the north and east, um, there's an existing uh, accurate patio with a, with a small landscape wall surrounding it, um, built right against the uh, vegetation that is on a slope leading down to the wetland. So this area is, uh, is vegetated with a mix of natives and invasives, and there's plans to do some management of that, and Teresa Sprague will go through the details on that. So the concept um, um, is to do, I don't want to use the word surgical, but a very methodical uh, disassembly of the house. I'm almost, not, I'm almost not willing to use the word demolition, although the existing house will be removed, but it's going to be done in a way that um, all of the windows, the glass, the doors, all of the things within the house that uh, plumbing, uh, piping will all be removed, so there'll be a shell, and they'll 
for the most part, the uh, timber materials re remaining that would be um, removed uh, via uh, disassembly of sections of it into pieces that can be loaded onto um, trucks and or roll-off dumpsters that will, be, as they're loaded, they'll be immediately removed from site and taken to a um, approved landfill for that or a um, recycle facility that um, is appropriate for that material. Um, when we initially started to look at the project and how to approach doing the reconstruction, we had a series of meetings with Jen McKay. Um, we met prior to even doing any design on the house initially on the site and then subsequent to that initial meeting and some preliminary design work and prior to filing, we met with her again. Um, wanted to make sure we were doing everything that we were expected to do. Then we filed the application and I believe we met one more time after just to make sure um, we had submitted things properly. So I, uh, we tried to really listen to um, Jen's input we also um, used our memory on previous projects similar, and I think we came up with a project that um, I think it meets your standards. Um, subsequent to the demolition, once the site has been pretty much made uh, shovel ready, I guess, or construction ready, uh, the first initial part of the construction would be the installation of the um, piling and the foundation system. The foundation system um, is shown on uh, the site plan and it's also shown on submission materials to you prepared by Joe Neubauer's office including uh, floor plans, um, foundation plan and a cross section of the pile and beam system that will support the superstructure. So the foundation and, and, and piling support system for the superstructure would be installed and then of course construction would continue vertically until there was um, a first floor elevation established and then construction will just continue at that point um, within the footprint of the house there will be some staging along the edges uh, there is room to do this uh, there will be access from one point only <coughs> we did everything we could to minimize the access from the existing driveway up through the area where the um, walkway access is. Uh, the equipment necessary to get here will need about a 20 foot wide access to get up to the house site to do the work, install the pilings. We've shown a limit of work defining the construction access and then uh, widening out somewhat here where there's very flat uh, sandy area, mainly just to give room for staging and access. There's no plans to con uh, store construction materials up here. Um, storage and staging will, will be in the driveway and in the garage and as materials are necessary they'll be delivered through the access by, by a small forklift um, and and then construction will continue. The limit of work um, continues around on this side, on the west side, and it wraps around on the north side. On the west side and the north side, um, it's critical to be very cognizant of the location of the limit of work. And the limit of work has been very specifically identified to be at the toe of this dune. If you've been to the site and you walked on the west side of the existing house, you 
witness the fact that there's a flat, sandy area on this side, but very quickly the topography uh, rolls up and there's a knoll uh, of dune with a path that leads through to the beach. So the concept and the plan is to have the limit of work at the toe of that rise up and not to do anything beyond. So it, all access will be from here, construction will occur, and, and then they'll work their way out, like painting your way out of a room to the doorway on a, on a much larger scale, of course. Um, on this side, because of that slope of the bank, we had a concern that a, uh, a, a typical limit of work might not be enough. There's a potential because of the looseness of the sand uh, during the installation of this uh, foundation system that the dune could uh, uh, slump. So we're proposing right on, on the toe again of that dune and in this area a temporary uh, sheet piling uh, wall um, probably made out of vinyl, um, we're not sure yet, um, but it'll be temporary. It would be probably uh, 12 to 16 foot sheets that would be installed. And the purpose of that is it acts certainly as a limit of work, um, but it'll also prevent the dune from slumping into the work site. Um, there are s there's some clusters of pines and some other trees on the top of this dune, and we want to make sure that when we're in close proximity that we won't have an impact on those trees or the vegetation on the dune in both these areas. So the limit of work basically goes in, a, in an envelope around the existing house site as tight as it can be for practical purposes with a little bit extra room where, where we can afford to have, have a little bit wider area and not have any impact on the dune. Um, I've noted on the plan some trees that have um, suffered from turpentine, turp, turpentine beetle. Um, they're dead or dying and we're proposing to remove those and replace those. Uh, Teresa will have more to say about that. The site is currently served by a Title V septic system that was recently inspected and passed the Title V inspection. We're not proposing to do anything with the septic since it passed. We don't want to excavate into the dune. We don't want to change anything. We want to just leave it as is and then just reconnect the pipe to the building at the end along with the other existing utilities that include a water service electric cable. There's uh, propane gas here. There's no natural gas to my knowledge on the site. So there's a propane tank adjacent to the garage that will, as of right now, unless someone can correct me, be the gas source to the house. We are collecting the roof runoff into dry wells, as shown on the plan. So the roof runoff will be directed to these dry wells, and it's sort of a unique system. The roof is a flat style roof with that pitch, but of course pitches this direction. You have to pay attention to the roof when you work in a velocity zone because we have competing interests. We have a zoning bylaw that you have a maximum height to ridge of 35 feet. But we have a velocity zone elevation 21. So to meet FEMA standards as well as your standards and not be too tall, you have to get innovative in how you design the roof system so that you don't violate the zoning bylaw maximum height. So it'll be a flat roof. And the uh, runoff from the roof will be channeled 
and divert it to these uh, urns that will collect the water. And below each uh, collection urn is a dry well, and it'll drain into the dry well. Speaking to the elevations of the house and the FEMA standards, you have in the file um, elevations of the proposed uh, points of interest. You have a requirement in velocity zones that um, says structures shall be designed to be elevated in velocity zones two feet above the velocity zone elevation. And since we have two, we have an interface of two velocity zones, a portion of the house is in the more uh, severe one, which is elevation 21. And the balance, um, and the majority of the house is in um, velocity zone with an elevation of 20. But we're designing to velocity zone with the 21, which means the, your regulations say the elevation should be two feet above 21 or elevation 23. And for, just for reference, the ground around the existing building averages elevation 14 now. So um, what you may or may not know is FEMA requires that the lowest structural member be elevated two feet above the velocity zone elevation 21. So the lowest structural member will be elevation 23, which will make the first floor even you know, higher than that because you have the structural elements to get to the first floor from the bottom of the beam. There's a proposal for a uh, rinse station, sort of an innovative uh, sy system. It's underneath the elevated building because realize that the building will be elevated on pilings and, and it'll probably be close to this relationship. Uh, so the first floor will be, that could be, relatively speaking, the bottom of the beam. So this rinse station will be underneath. It'll be, there'll be a drain and there'll be a curtain. So you'll have a uh, rinse station underneath the building that will drain into a drywall. <clears throat> I think that pretty much sums up the project from the site planning point of view. I will turn it over to Teresa and we're all here, uh, contractors, architects, we're all here to answer questions. Will people feel hurt if they don't get questions? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, um, Teresa Sprague, Blue Flex Design, just going to start off with some photographs of the site that were taken um, in April of uh, 2017. Um, existing conditions, Mike's covered them pretty well um, from a vegetation standpoint. Single family dwelling, detached garage, um, sandy footpath leading from the deck to the west side of the house through the dunes, down the wooden um, stairs to the bay. The rest of the property is undeveloped and largely supports an incredible, healthy, and diverse native plant community. The gravel driveway runs west from Little Bars Neck Road towards the house, coastal dunes to the south, and an interdunal swale wetland um, to the north. The vegetation to the west of the dwelling is um, mostly native, with American beach grass being the dominant plant species. Other herbaceous vegetation includes um, seaside goldenrod, and there is some poison ivy located throughout the area. Native woody vegetation um, includes eastern red cedar, pitch pine, um, along with serviceberry, northern bayberry, and beach heather. The wetland on the property comprised of native wild cranberry, high bush blueberry, sheep laurel, summer sweet, groundsel bush. The shrub layer directly to the east and northeast, east, northeast, and southeast of the dwelling and areas to the west, east, and south of the garage are mainly dominated by invasive shrub honeysuckle. Um, and the shrubs are found mainly in areas consistent with long-term disturbance and protection from the wind. So you can see um, these areas around the garage and the house. I'll show you the areas that are mainly dominated by um, invasive vegetation. So as Mike pointed out, the current structure uh, within the landform is acting as a barrier, um, and therefore the dune is not able to respond to wind and wave energy as it should, and it's um, inhibited in its ability to perform storm damage prevention functions to its full capacity. 
So in identifying the benefits to the project with the overall goals, which are to lift the house out of the dune, um, which will restore the ecological integrity and function of the ex existing dune system by um, allowing the um, raised dwelling to um, s stop impeding sand's ability to mo be moved and changed by wind and natural water flow. Um, this, again, will protect the dune and barrier beach and adjacent area wetland areas by um, removing the dwelling that doesn't currently, currently meet flood zone building standards, constructing a dwelling that does, does meet um, flood code and will not litter the resource area with potentially dangerous debris and materials in the event of flooding. Um, as Mike pointed out, runoff from the, um, from the roof will be directed into um, dry well containers. Um, we'll, we are proposing to restore appropriate native vegetation to all disturbed areas within the limit of work and to selectively remove invasive plant species from within the dune barrier beach complex to restore with native vegetation. So there's several different areas called out on the plan. So the area that is um, shaded in green is the um, restoration area um, within the limit of work, um, approximately 4,057 square feet. Um, we are proposing to restore that with um, plugs of American beach grass and other um, native dune species, that's about 1,800 um, plugs of beach grass at 18 inch on center. Um, the restoration area that's shown in yellow inside the limit of work to the west, south, and north of the house will be planted with um, beach grass, and um, planted with native trees and shrubs, including pitch pine, scrub oak, northern bayberry, beach plum, and Virginia rose. The ground layer will be planted with clusters of beach grass, which will transition into bearberry. Um, Pennsylvania sandal will be planted further east into this area in here. The areas that are shown in the um, tighter hatch mark are the areas where invasive species are predominant, um, mainly shrub honeysuckle. We're proposing to selectively remove the invasive plant species that would be cut uh, by hand, um, treated with a systemic herbicide, and the root system is allowed to um, decompose and biodegrade over time. Um, there are a lot of very healthy native plant species in this area that are being overcome by invasive plant species. We'd be leaving all native plant species intact and protecting them during the invasive species management process. Um, these areas will be planted with um, beach palm, bayberry, um, Virginia rose, as well as the scrub oak and pitch pine. As you head down the driveway further to the east, in the area with the wider um, hatch mark, we're proposing to very selectively, there's a few shrub honeysuckle, we're proposing to remove them um, before they become problematic, like they are in the areas directly um, around the house, and to the, to the east of the house and around the garage, and allow them to just um, regenerate naturally with the native vegetation that's in there. Um, I'm hesitant to bring any additional um, um, plants from off-site into the area because there is such a healthy native plant community here with a healthy local um, genotype um, plant species. So I'm hesitant to bring anything additional into here except for these disturbed areas um, just to prevent hybridization. So with that, um, you know, there's a discussion on page um, six, which I won't go into, about the function of a dune, I know you all are very familiar with the function of a coastal dune here, so um, I don't think we need to go into that. But the benefit of lifting this house up out of the dune, keeping the um, foot traffic into the house area that's now elevated out of the dune, so with the exception of the footpath that leads down to the stairs to the beach, mainly all, um, all um, foot traffic and human function will take place in the elevated structure, meaning the decks, etc. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions about the dune itself, the existing vegetation, or the um, proposed restoration. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks. Jen? Uh, the, only, I, the only clarification I want to make, and then I want to make a couple of comments, I don't even know if they're for Mike. Um, just the, the breakaway panels, whoever wants to answer my breakaway panel question. Just to let the board know, I have met with the project team at least three times. I met on site, met in the office, um, 
they did listen to the concerns and the comments of the staff they did um, double check with the building commissioner on a couple of, of things that I was fairly con uh, you know we were not confused but of different mindsets on so that was clarified and I just want the board to know and Jill I mean I just a quick question just so the board understands from your and I do have one clarification from your um, I don't know they're not architect they're your plans is that that breakaway panel area is just like approximately 36 by 12 so it's a very small portion of the house and it's just that entry way it's where there's an elevator right? yeah well no the elevator actually isn't breakaway it can't be by code mm -hmm. oh, so that is going to be area. a solid but okay. that other area that says storage concrete on slab landward of the rinse station that's the breakaway panels yes. everything else is an open concept correct yes and that's the only clarification i want to make jill i didn't mean to make you get up okay. but um you know the the staff was happy i just have one question what is the difference between happy chappy plans and chappy shed plans clarification of the name oh okay that's it which, all right so which one should we cite um it's the same architecture we just have to change the Okay, we'll cite that one then. All right, so just so we know which one plan to cite on that. Um, other than that, I met with Teresa after she was brought on board to discuss the landscape plan, and I don't have any questions. All my questions and concerns were uh, answered. The only, yeah, the only comment I'd like to make is for the builder. I see you back there. You probably will see a condition that I'd like to meet you because I did not meet you on site um, during this whole um, design, um, during that whole design. So I'll probably have a condition that I meet you on site and then go back out onto the site once that sheet piling of the dune is installed just to make sure that was correct. Okay? Okay. That's it, Madam Chairman. Okay, coordinate. Um, <clears throat> the project's well thought out, and um, I was sitting here, and my first question was just answered. Mm -hmm. um, a project of this sort, in this sensitive an area, requires a builder who in his spare time is a surgeon. <laughs> um, and um, so my first question was that we, I wanted to know if a builder had been selected. and. I guess the answer to that is yes, um, because right from the beginning, he needs to be on board with everything because site management is key. Um, and um, so I'm comforted by the fact that you guys have thought this all through and got a team in place. Okay. That's yep. It. And you said it all. I have what you think. I have a question about the um, the discharge pool. Do you have anything on there for that in the event of groundwater? And if you have it, and I didn't see it, I'm sorry. Well, Madam Chairman, three, can you clarify for me, please, what your question is? You have a note in here about encountering the potential for encountering groundwater. And that you'll pump it out. Where? Um, where was that no reference? Because we don't have any expectation of it. If it's in the narrative, it's a mistake. We're at elevation 14. Just going by what you wrote. Yeah. We're at elevation 14. I mean, if you start on my narrative, I apologize. I might, might have. Generic note, maybe? Yeah, but we're at elevation 14, and groundwater is going to be about elevation 2. I saw it. Yeah, we don't have any expectation of groundwater dewatering or anything. In fact, the pile system is um, an augured pile, which okay, doesn't, during, I'm sorry. doesn't require any real excavation. During excavation and installation of the foundation, groundwater will be pumped to keep the exca excavation dry and the water removed will be just recharged on site. And that's in, so the architect's note. Oh, that's probably uh, general like provisions in the event you encountered it, not for this site specific. We're not, we have no expectation of groundwater on this site. I would hope not. 
Um, you said that the septic meets Title V. Yes. Right. I could provide, I don't know that, I don't believe I provided the, I don't remember if I provided the inspection report, but. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to pull it for yeah, permit anyway. There is right? a report. So, um, you have a note in there, you'll protect the septic system. Yes. Once you identify it exactly. Yeah, and the limit of work is in a place that <coughs> puts the septic outside. In theory. <laughs> um, yeah, and clarification, the garage and shed are existing and they stay. Yeah, there's nothing proposed, no proposed activities or changes to work. Well, I hope you'll reshingle it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Thank you. Um, it, it, again, the, your presentation and the written presentation were, were uh, very comprehensive and uh, careful uh, about that sensitive area. That's obviously, my questions are probably not related to the commission. I, I can't visualize the house and I probably don't need to. I certainly don't need to well, for Steve, this presentation. Have, but, but I have the same question. You, you're going to have a, you have, you're going to put pilings in and you're going to have a concrete slab at 14 feet, right? Mm -hmm. and, but basically it's an open structure. The idea is that as winds blow, as we know winds are going to blow non -reinforced. there, that sand can blow mm -hmm. through there. So presumably where your rinse station is might get, that concrete floor might get piled up mm -hmm. with sand over time, right? Because the dune's moving. The, the dune wants to move northeast and there's some reasonable expectation that around the rinse station and like where you may walk and store materials under there, it's almost like shoveling snow. You might have to. Well, I was going to say you're going to need a shovel and a and a and a broom. <laughs> right. Yeah. But okay. but the whole northeast corner it can continue to. But moderate. that's what. Yeah. So I had that question. Right. Too. I just want to see what the house is going to look like. So, but that that's irrelevant for our commission. Well, um, except that except that we want it at the proper level above this area where the sand's going to blow through. Right. And, and, and the visualization from Buzzards Bay of, of the existing house is, is almost uh, non-existent. You, you can't see it until you get out in the water. And this will be, the, I can't figure out the total height of this building and, and the existing building. What, what is the difference in the... So it's nine or ten feet higher than the existing. It, it's again, it's not related to conservation. You have to yeah. come up and thanks, Jill. The, the television audience can't hear you when you're back there. You're Thank a you. star tonight, Jill. <laughs> it's just the difference between that right now the house is almost at grade and getting it up out of the floodplain. That's the height that our house is being raised up. And so we're taking a two-story house and putting it up on top of that floodplain elevation. So we are going up about eight Okay. Feet. You don't have a drawing of what the house looks like, do you? The office, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? No. Here? Wait. Wait. I'll make a Is motion. Is that you? Oh, all right. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the table. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay, this is obviously a spectacular sight, and it will be nice to see this raised. And where's the family who's going to move into it? It'll be nice to to see. Are you from Falmouth? Uh, we, we have a house in Pocas. Well, welcome to Falmouth. <laughs> okay, I'll take the vote. All in favor of the motion on the table, which is to close the hearing and take it under advisement, say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, staff. You're welcome. That's why I have a job. That's why when things come to you, yeah. you don't have too many questions. When you have a, when you have a good presentation, yeah. you don't have a lot of Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. That's, that is an important point to make. Thank you.
It's not a bad place to go out. Okay. We all set? Mm -hmm. Thomas DeMello and Cynthia, Cynthia <laughs> Feldman. 46 Jetty Lane, West Falmouth, for permission to replace tree and shrub vegetation removed without a permit. Conduct invasive plant management, install plantings, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Madam Chairman, I will save any of my comments until after Teresa's presentation. Okay. okay. Um, um, before we start, Mike, could I ask you to make sure everybody who wants to talk it out goes to another place? Thanks, Teresa. Welcome. Uh, Michael should have the comments. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Teresa Sprague, again, from Flex Design, here with Michael Borselli, um, representing um, the DeMello family. Um, this project comes to you um, as a previous um, violation. My understanding, I was not involved with the original project, but my understanding is that um, there was planting that was required for the installation of the pool um, structure on the site at 46 Jetty Lane. Um, and plantings were required and were not installed. Um, the conditions, current conditions on the site, um, So the site is um, eastern shores of Buzzards Bay, Coastal Beach, borders the bay, transitions into Coastal Dune further east, which we were asked to delineate and have delineated, and the um, dune line is shown on the plan. Um, vegetation along the coastal beach within the dune is a mix of native vegetation, including beach grass, northern bayberry, as well as non-native and invasive vegetation, including Rigosa rose, Asiatic bittersweet, vine honeysuckle, porcelain berry, etc. There is an old foundation. Um, currently serves as a patio um, within the vegetated buff, I mean within the coastal dune um, with a path leading east to the yard in the house. East of the patio within the, in, uh, within the vegetated buffer, invasive species including porcelain berry, English ivy, shrub honeysuckle, vine honeysuckle, Asiatic bittersweet have heavily colonized the area. You can see this in this they're beginning to climb and damage some of the existing cedar trees and oaks, and they're rapidly outcompeting the shrub community in the area. To the east of the vegetated buffer, the area has been cleared of vegetation. Um, you can see the mulch in those photographs there, sparsely planted with hydrangeas, some um, clethora, a cultivar called 16 candles, and inkberry. The majority of the planting bed is covered in um, bark mulch. The lawn meets the planting bed and extends up to the pool um, and to the house. So we are proposing to um, do a couple of things. One is plant the bark mulch area, which was required in the original order for the swimming pool. Um, we're proposing 166 native um, plant species in that area, um, including um, some uh, chokeberry, inkberry, bayberry, a little bit of potentilla, just 11, Jennifer, and um, beach plum, <laughs> a little bit of fragrant sumac, and um, some Carolina and Virginia rose and arrowwood viburnum. Um, in addition to that, we're also proposing to manage invasive species in the approximately 14,600 square foot um, area that's shaded in yellow. So the mitigation area that was originally planted is shaded in pink. Um, we're showing those shrubs in there. And then the area that's shaded in yellow, we're proposing um, invasive species management. Again, selective management. There are some healthy, there's healthy cedars in there we want to protect, healthy oak, some cherry, bayberry, et cetera. Um, we'll remove, treat and remove the bittersweet, the porcelain berry vine. Um, the Rogosa Rose will thin out, but generally the goal there is not to remove um, or eliminate the Rogosa Rose. It's just simply to um, thin it out to allow for um, native vegetation to live peacefully along with it. Um, we'll be managing invasive plant species with a mix of selective herbicide and hand removal. We are proposing to manage poison ivy directly around the path. The patio is quite thick um, and growing into the pathway in the patio area in here. Um, 
we are proposing to plant um, that area again with a mix of back June uh, maritime shrub plant species, Amelanchier canadensis, um, black chipberry, um, beach plum, uh, bayberry, and Virginia and Carolina rose, along with um, beach grass in the June area. And then in other areas, um, seed with a mix of um, some milkweeds, butterfly weed, um, New England aster, some purple love grass, switchgrass, blue stems, seaside goldenrod, and Indian grass. Um, I did meet Jennifer out on the site and reviewed the plan. Um, we and then reviewed the plan. We reviewed the site conditions together, and then reviewed the plan um, after it was completed in the office. Um, I will say that the house is currently under agreement. It's in the process of being sold. I have, however, been working directly with the new property owner. Purchase and sale agreement has been signed. I've reviewed the plan entirely with them. They understand the plan. They understand the cost of implementation, and they are ready to um, implement the plan if the commission approves it. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Jen? Yes, Madam Chairman, I did review the plan with Teresa in the field. Actually, I think the first time I went out was with Mike. Um, Teresa, again, in the office. I understand the sink foil. It's going right up to the, the, the access door on that side of the house. I remember we were discussing yes. it out in the field. Yep. But you're right. I don't like it. <laughs> but, I know you don't. But no, I know, I know why 11. we discussed why we, okay. you, you were using that species in that area, yep. and I'm fine with it, like I said, out in the field. So I have no more questions. I think it's going to... It's going to look really nice getting the vines out of the trees there. It's going to really open that up, and it's going to be pretty. It's a pretty sight anyway. It's going to be really nice. It is. Steve? Yeah. <clears throat> is there any work proposed on the patio? There is no, no work proposed on the patio at this time. So. Um, Likely to happen sometime. Mm -hmm. it, it may happen in the future, but as of for this purp the purposes of this plan was really to restore and mitigate for what had not been done previously. Okay. And there's no... Um, access within the property to the beach there is none and none has been requested at this time there's access obviously um, from the road yeah, from yeah. The right down to the beach. okay that's yeah. all i have okay thanks steve jamie ross I'm good courtney my only comment is um since i won't be here when this is deliberated i'll put my two cents in now it would be nice to some way delineate the edge of with some kind of marker to make sure that understood that like it will a single a single rail yeah one of those very zones. low single mm -hmm. rails yep. yeah yeah it's, it's all going to be woody and taller woody vegetation so it shouldn't be an issue of lawn mowers migrating but i understand based on the past um that that would be a good idea it's a good yep. it's a single um, rail fence yeah single rail fence. yes yeah it'd be really nice to get the you'll have a lot of work there but <laughs> to get the vines that are in there, but once they're cleared, that's going to be a beautiful area. Yeah, I think it will be a beautiful area. I think we can still um, save those cedar trees at this point. Yep. Just going to be great. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Any other questions? Uh, Jamie. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? Okay, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so move. Thanks, Teresa. Mike, you had such a compelling argument. <laughs> Sometimes it's better than not. No. Okay. Uh, East. <laughs> Pardon me? We ready? ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Everybody ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Oh, East Harbor sorry. Realty Trust, in care of Giovanni Testa, trustee, 56 East Harbor Drive, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to construct a coastal bank stairway and landing, four foot by 60, four foot by 60, 46 by five foot timber pier walkway, three foot by 12 foot ramp, eight foot by 12 foot float, 10 inch pilings and associated clearing, excavating, grading and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Madam Chairman, I will hold any of my comments until after Jeff's presentation. Good evening, Jeff. Good evening. Thank 
you. And good evening. I'm Jeff Ryder with BSS Design, representing the applicant. Um, some of you uh, may recall this project. Uh, it's been designed identical to a project that was in front of you 10 years ago. Um, during that time, um, the owner, who was Mr. Salerno, remember that one, mm -hmm. um, he couldn't uh, make the project work financially and, uh, and off it went to somebody else. So here we are 10 years later and same dock, same spot, um, same soundings, same wetlands pretty much. And um, the only thing that's a little, little different is a little more detail in the profile. Here. But anyway, this is a coastal bank stairway. You can see here in the profile. And then to a uh, pitching uh, pier for about 60 feet. And then the uh, ramp and float. Excuse me, I'm wrong on that distance. It's 44 feet of uh, pier. So again, the, uh, there's plenty of water depth. At the mooring field, about five and a half feet, four to five feet in this area. We've uh, placed it um, between these two other docks, right in the center, to uh, have the best mobility to still dock on each uh, adjacent dock. Uh, we have some details here, the ramp, the stairway, the pier section and the walkway down the hill. Uh, resource areas, land under the ocean. We got land subject to coastal storm flowage and salt marsh. The salt marsh patches are here and here. So we don't plan to cross those. At the high tide mark, right here is the lateral axis of at least five feet in height. So that's shown. And what else? Again, you saw it uh, 10 years ago, gave it an approval. We went through and got license, Army Corps permit, selectman's permit, all ready to go, and no dough. So you have to start again <coughs> with a yes, license? everything. So here I am from scratch. We even did a new survey, uh, shelter survey yep. in the middle of the winter. <laughs> And uh, this shellfish survey, by the way, uh, shows very few shellfish, well, eight in 160 samples. And they weren't, if you look at your maps in the survey, they were more on the sides and not in the mooring field mm -hmm. or in the center line of the dock. So that's about it. I'll take your questions. Okay, thanks. Jen, any questions? I don't have any questions, Madam Chairman. Steve, I'll start with you again. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Jamie, do you have any questions? Would we want full through decking? Is this going to be flow? It doesn't look like it. Flow it through combine. decking? Uh, it wasn't, but we could probably do that if we have to. You have a little bit of marsh just south of there, right, Jeff? little teeny bit of marsh that you have on your plan? Uh, north. North, to sorry. The north. Sorry. little patch here and there. Maybe the stretch over, I mean, potentially marsh. Yeah, it could, could migrate, expand. so. Maybe oh. flow through the decking. The only problem is transitioning from sort of standard dock to Getting underneath. 
at that area. Well, it's an ele yeah, it's elevated for people to go on to walk underneath too. Yeah. I'm good, Jesse. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Wow. I'll have a, a make a motion close here and take it under advisement. Okay. Um, any any other questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? Okay, hearing none, we call for the vote. This is a closing hearing and take it under advisement. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous so move. Thanks, Thank Jeff. Thank you. Is this yeah. easier a second time around? <laughs> I think it was like this last time. <laughs> I remember the first time. I'm like, I'm like, the name. I'm I'm like, the name. I don't remember. No, the, the, I, the name's a different property. No, no. Well, was, the name was the name oh, the yeah. person who had it. Yeah. I remember that name, but maybe I remember I didn't the site. make it around to the site visit the first time. It was beautiful. So all these sites were beautiful this week. The next couple. Why am I doing this? Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. I've never been in that neighborhood. Where? Oh, that neighborhood? Yeah. Wasn't that pretty? Yeah. Yeah. It's a real surprise. Okay, oh, Carol Johnson, 217 and 223 Meadow Neck Road, Bequoit, Massachusetts. For permission to remove invasive non-native plant species and to install plantings to restore and maintain maritime shrubland, maritime woodland plant communities, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. But I will save any of my comments until after, are we on Mennonek? Yep. Seth's presentation. Seth. I was going to say, before you have questions, let's let Seth. Yep. But you don't have any yet. Nope. Welcome, Seth. Idea with Raul, what are you doing? Oh. Thanks, Raul. Can, can Susan have one? Thank you, Raul. Sorry. Orange or Bella Blower. Yeah. If you want to keep your oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. number it and put it in here. Number it and just say color back. Good evening. For the record, Raul is Isaac from Holmes and McGrath. Also with us tonight is Seth Wilkinson from Wilkinson Ecological Design um, as part of the design team for this project. We're pre representing the applicant, Carol Johnson, uh, for the project at the property of, it's actually two addresses, number 217 and 223 Meadow Neck Road. The proposed project is land management plan to remove invasive and non-native aggressive plants and to propose replacement with woody um, maritime woodland plants. The resources on this property are land under the ocean, Wakoi Bay, which is an ACEC at ele up to elevation 19. Um, there's a salt marsh, land subject to coastal storm flowage, a velocity zone, and a coastal bank. All of the proposed work is taking place within the buffer zone A and within um, resource areas, which is the coastal bank. And for explanation of the proposed planting plan, I'll introduce um, Seth to you guys. Thanks, Raul. Um, for the record, Seth Wilkinson, Wilkinson Ecological Design. Um, as Raul stated, the uh, project is uh, primarily vegetation management, uh, taking the form of uh, uh, invasive plant management, uh, restoration planting, and the development of a 25-foot uh, view corridor uh, at this property, um, and that would the view corridor is is just limited in this filing uh, to the property uh, to the left-hand side of the plan at 223 two, uh, Meadow Neck Road. Um, in developing the uh, uh, proposed view corridor, we evaluated uh, the, the environmental conditions of the plant plants growing on the coastal bank. 
uh, and also the desired views from the from the dwelling. And uh, this particular location um, appeared to be the best uh, suited to match both the, the desires of the homeowner and the uh, environmental conditions on the embankment. Primarily, in fact, it wouldn't remove any. It wouldn't require the removal of any healthy large diameter trees to develop that that corridor. Um, we also have taken a comprehensive approach, not just proposing to manage um, uh, vegetation within the view corridor, but also comprehensively looking at the entire uh, uh, site of the two parcels, which are in co common ownership presently. Um, fortunately, there's not much at the northern end of the of the property. Uh, with re with regard, I'm sorry, the north, yeah, northern end. Um, the, the, the invasives just sort of fade out at that end, so there's no, no ac activity proposed up in that location. And they actually start to fade out at the southern end of 223 as well, which is, which is nice. The most aggressive uh, infestation is shown in this area, and we've referred to that generally as the uh, major invasion area. And then these other areas shown in light green are more of a minor or moderate uh, invasion. Uh, but minor invasions tend to evolve to major invasions relatively quickly uh, in these types of, of plants, plant communities. So we're proposing to take care of them before they become a major invasion and, and start to limit biodiversity and degrade the wildlife habitat. Um, this image is just blown up from, from the land management plan which you received. And that's, that's an example of um, the um, major invasion uh, of, of the site. Uh, fortunately, there are still some some trees which we think could be recovered as the invasive vines are removed. Fall is a helpful time of year to take pictures of invasives because they tend to show up really well in that yellow color. Um, and species like uh, pines and oaks do, do succumb to uh, Asiatic bittersweet as we've all seen um, in other times. Um, We're also proposing to do some fairly uh, uh, dense uh, planting, not, not really as mitigation because there's no structural proposal as part of this project, um, but to restore biodiversity and also sort of try to close that ecological niche up so it's not subject to uh, further invasion um, down the road. Uh, the, the just sort of walking you through the, the plan, there's the overview sheet here. Um, and we identify the specific vegetation to be removed within the, uh, the corridor, um, the planting, which is proposed in the lower left-hand corner, and um, the specific plant management um, elements of the plan in the upper right corner of the plan. There's also a uh, land management plan dated May 2nd, where we go into detail, as you've um, come to see from us in the past, um, identifying both the uh, unique natural resources on the property, what's being threatened by the invasive species. Um, we're proposing some uh, modest ecological woodland management uh, techniques. Uh, an example of which, um, within the view corridor, we've had very good luck in, in other projects. There's a, a, a cherry which has had some historical uh, pruning done to it, um, and it really would be hard to restore that back into a tree. Uh, we feel coppicing would be a, a great alternative uh, because with cherries in particular, they tend to flush out and you're usually left with, with more vegetation than, than you have at the, at the outset. Um, and uh, on page seven of the land management plan is a picture uh, which of a project which we did to a cherry uh, where we coppiced a cherry um, on a project elsewhere in Cape Cod and it, it flushed out and within a very short period of time. It, it had considerably more foliage um, as well as flowering and fruiting capacity as it did than it did before it was coppiced. Um, the, the activities over a three year period are detailed uh, in pages eight and nine of what would, would be proposed to be done at, at different seasons of the year. Um, an inventory of the plants, both invasive and native, which have been documented on the site, are included in pages 10 and 11. And um, then definitions and references at the end of the land management plan. Um, only other tree I, I guess I didn't, didn't speak to, there really is no, no view component, but there is a uh, pitch pine which is located here. You saw in the image um, in, in the land management plan, really severe infestation of, of um, black turpentine beetle uh, beyond where it could be treated and saved. Um, I've not seen the sap run out around the base of a tree as it's shown in, in, the, uh, in the image. And it's also, with given the proximity to the dwelling, 
uh, uh, was evaluated by Bartlett tree experts and found to be um, a, a considerable risk to the, to the dwelling. Um, and the tree is, is, is on the way out uh, at this point. Um, there's, there's a fairly widespread in, uh, infestation of the, the gall wasp. Um, and well, I would say generally in the Cape and Islands, we saw a little bit of recovery from some oaks uh, last summer, which is good news. Um, we're not sure what the long-term future of the health of the black oaks in the area will be as that sort of ecologically folds out. So the, the uh, uh, restoration trees of tree fruit proposed are white oaks, which are not susceptible to the gall wasp. Um, you know, we, we hope the black oaks make it, but uh, we're, we're not planting as much black oak as we used to um, until we start to see things equalize with the, uh, the gall wasp. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, sir. Jen? Yes, yeah, Seth, um, a couple of things. Um, you didn't have your Vista Corridor flagged out real, did you? Because I didn't really, oh, Seth's looking at Raul. Raul, next time, have your crew, because it was very difficult for me to, so have them flag out the Vista Corridor. Um, second, Seth, the, the Black Oaks, um, the good news is a couple of the arborists that Mark and I have been talking to um, in Falmouth say that the, the you know the gall wasp they're not seeing as much of it anymore, that's so that's uh, that's good. Is there any way we can save the black oaks or the oaks that you want to take down by that brick terrace because they seem to be, I mean they're leafing out. They seem to be doing okay right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the one by the walkway, the same. Mm-hmm. The, um, so just I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear. This there. one. Two of the three by the, okay. just below the patio. Yes. And then when you go down the walkway, mm -hmm. there's one right to your left. This walkway? Yep. And yep. it's all leaping out. Yep. Um, we could certainly uh, monitor that, uh, certainly through the life of the, the permit, and, and, and come back. Um, yeah. yeah. And to you. Um, the, uh, if this is helpful, we did flag the trees. Um, and no, I'm okay. getting to that. I did. Okay. I did okay. see. I did see the, the trees flagged, and I'm, I'm getting to that. The ones in orange were the ones you want to remove, correct? Correct. And the ones in white. To are those are to remain. To the the ones that were flagged in white were to remain. Uh, there's well, let's see. There's yellow. I'm sorry. A, a, a greenish uh, yellow. Um, those are proposed for sapling management. Okay. Uh, the blue was the was the cherry. Yep. That was proposed to be coppice, and so it would be allowed to regrow. Um, <coughs> and uh, those were the three the three color uh, colors. Okay. Well, you propose to coppice the damaged oaks as well. Can is there a way maybe you can monitor those oaks by the patio and see? And then come back to that. Uh, that um, we could certainly look at that. Uh, I would just have to. Uh, we are trying to create a relatively limited 25-foot corridor. Are you referring to the? the no, no, no. I'm talking over by the brick terrace. Yes, yes, the ones over by the brick terrace. No, I'm talking about the by the yep. brick terrace. Yep. Yep. Okay. Because um, the three you want to take out in that in that view corridor, and then the shrubs that you'd like to put back in the view corridor, the Bearberry, which we usually say is like more of a ground cover, and sweet fern, is that it? Yeah. And then you're doing more of just the grasses on the bank? As, as far as additional plantings go, we wouldn't be removing any of the shrubs that are presently intact there. Yeah. Um, okay. Shrub layers seem to be in, in fairly good shape, so trying to just improve the. Just improve that? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, I'm stuck on my bracelet here. Oh. And um, the only other thing I had was over by seven, was it 217? Um, 219. 219, there was that path that was going down. There was a very, there was a large, um, or a pine that had an orange tag on it that you didn't have to be removed on the plant. There were two trees tagged along that pathway right off. <coughs> he has the pine to be removed. What was that? He has the pine to be removed. No, the big pine to be removed, but not the pine along the pathway. So 
So go down over to where it says stepping stones. Yep. And go up on the top. Yep. And go down. I saw, oh, I got myself out. <laughs> and where was it? See? There were some tagged in, in that area where the stepping stones were, too. Okay. Were those going to be removed or not? I don't believe those were being proposed for okay. removal. No. I apologize for the confusion. No, it's okay. Sometimes I was just, I was curious because I'm, I'm going there and I'm walking along and I'm trying to say, okay, that's that tree. I got it. So I just, I was just curious. It was a very pretty sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those were my only questions. I was just kind of concerned with those, those three oaks and if there's any way we could just monitor them and if they get more damaged, of, of course, but that was it. You can't ask the question yet. So save your question and you'll get your chance. Jen, are you done? Yes. Courtney, do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Um, the um, are the uh, oaks currently infected with gall, well, uh, gall wasps? I, they're, they're pretty widespread in this on this property. Yeah. You're aware that there's treatments for that. I am. Yes. Yes. Because we actually I've, had, had I've one of the companies managed to salvage a number of large, 150 year old oaks on my own property. It's not cheap. Right. And it involves you know, treating the, the drilling into the trees. In the, in the summer, injecting some stuff and then spraying them in the spring when the critters are going up the trees and then again um, once it leaves out. But, uh, and it requires a year or two, a couple of years of treatment. And I, I would hope that um, you could explore that and be proactive and save those trees. I mean, those, that's a, you know, um, so that's, um, that's one question, and the other one <coughs> is more for Holmes and McGrath. Um, I'm looking at uh, your application here, and um, I just want to know when Meadow Neck Road was part of Woods Hole. Oh, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> or. <laughs> or, what did Warcoit did Warcoit annex Woods Hole? <laughs> you should proofread these things before you uh, uh, submit them. Uh, with, with respect to your first question, it's uh, one of the problems of having an ex-teacher who was a major pain in his in, <coughs> to his students for things like this. Anyway, I've been accused of the same in my. Other office. than that, a good presentation, nice sight. Thank, thank you, Courtney. Um, with respect to your question about the management of the gall wasp, uh, Bartlett has, uh, it, which is I believe one of the leading companies that, that developed that, that technique of the injection um, and the treatment, um, and uh, so they, they are familiar. Uh, they, they did help us to assess that it was in fact gall wasp um, yeah. and, and have, have walked the site and uh, if, if the uh, directive is to um, manage those, then I, I think that, that... There are other arborists that, yeah, that absolutely. also do that yeah. work. No other questions. Okay. Russ. Jamie. <laughs> Nothing. Steve. I, I just wanted to say that uh, the, the vista that you chose really was to the advantage of the environment rather than to the homeowner, and I appreciated that. Thank you. I have no questions. Okay. My, so I have a couple of comments. One is um, I agree with Jen. I mean, the, the oaks you have planning to remove are all leaving out mm -hmm. yeah. and I'd like to see them stay sure. if, if they can stay. Um, and my other question is just, and Seth, you've been, you work out mm -hmm. east, so you've seen a lot of sites like this. This was, I thought this was a fascinating site <coughs> from the perspective of, I was trying to guess whether it was the hurricane of 38 or one of the hurricanes of, what was it, 44? You can, you, could, you can look here and see that waves hit way up on the slope and it terraced down. You mm -hmm. could just see that and then you could see the vegetation has come back. And, you know, it's 50, 60 years of vegetation. And there are a few places where subsequent storms have caused it to slump a little bit. But it was, uh, it was really a fascinating sight to I see what, uh, what happens for people who say, well, 
this area has never been hit. Well, yeah, these areas have been hit. It's yeah. just, you just never know wh when and where it might hit. We, we had similar conversations internally during the design phase, and uh, one of the presumptions was that that wall may have, may have been built. Uh, unfortunately, it's not too extensive, but there's, it's in sort of a strange location, perched mm -hmm. up, up the slope there. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and, and so that was, and, and certainly not to the standards of a seawall, <laughs> but um, more of a, just a landscape retaining wall. Um, and and it, it is, the site has stabilized everywhere else quite, quite nicely. Um, there, is some, there is some open erosion. It's, it's fairly far from the dwelling, so um, even though we're, we're proponents of shoreline stabilization, the property owner wasn't worried about it, and it's a good sediment source for the adjacent marshes and the littoral system, so we haven't proposed just letting, letting that, yeah, letting I mean, that it, be. Yeah, I mean, it should be fine, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was really interesting to look at the, at the geological and biological succession in that area. Okay. I'll make a motion to close it here and take it under five. Second. Okay, we have a motion in two seconds. <laughs> Are there any other questions on the board? Any questions from the audience? Yes. That's, I almost forgot about you. Microphone. But you have to come up and tell us who you are, and then you can ask your question. Thank you. My name is Chris Cavallaro. I'm the abutter next door, 234 Mennonek Road. My mom's here, 228 Mennonek Road. We're trying to learn a little bit more about the scope of what's being done uh, next door, what's being proposed, and how far does it go down the coastal bank. And that's a little unclear about that. And so if somebody could kind of just address that, just show us how far that. Well, I think we'll let Seth explain it to you. Um, so, I'm sorry. I'll take the microphone, please. Are you the neighbor to the north or the south that was up at this end? Excuse me? Is, are you, is your dwelling mm -hmm. up at this end or at this end? Uh, Both of our homes are directly across the across street. Across the street. Across the street, okay. So the extent of the project um, where the, the, the large marsh is located here to the south, it, it tapers to a point in the vicinity of the brick terrace. So it doesn't, doesn't extend any further to the road than the brick terrace. And then it wraps around on the on the water side, following the communities, and then stops more or less in line with the uh, the cottage by the, the pool on, on that location. But the work is limited to the coastal bank and the edge of the coastal bank. So how far does it go down? Uh, not too far uh, down the actual bank. If you're familiar with the stone retaining wall, it, it stops at that point um, and, and more or less carries that six foot contour line there. Uh, and then it actually goes back up the bank a bit uh, around that uh, stairway, which is in the hillside, um, and, and about halfway down the bank, going south, uh, but then just keeping up along the top level, the, the slope starts to mm -hmm. fall away there. So is all that underbrush going to be cleared out? Is that the objective? The is that a recent photo also? Uh, that was taken in the fall. Yep, that was taken in the fall. It's easier to see which is, which species are invasive because they've changed color. Um, so the vines are the primary are the primary invasive species, and this was taken looking looking through there over right the corner. Uh, the, the, the bench would be over here, um, and uh, it's just the, the vines and the invasive species. That the invasive species are primarily the vines. So the trees, the remaining shrubs, those would all be carefully worked around. It's just getting rid of those vines to protect the health of the trees and the, and the understory vegetation. These are the kind of invasive species that will, and one of, one of the, another that's not so much here as some of the other sites we've had tonight, right. but like English ivy. Right. If you don't control your English ivy, it's going to kill your trees. We have the same problem across the street. <coughs> so they're choking With out all the, the invasive trees. Yeah. All the thorn, thorny vines that are growing there. Yeah. That's the same problem. So all the cedars are dying in clumps. Yeah. Know. So, so you should probably. Okay. No, it's good to know. Try to remove them. With if a but, permit, Madam Chairman. <laughs> but, <laughs> no. I was just going to say, but if you're, but if you're in. Are you a permit for that? <laughs> yeah. If you're in conservation area, if you're anywhere within 100 feet it's of wetlands. Yeah. Oh, all right. So come in and talk to staff. But they'll, they'll. Give me some guidance. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the table to close the hearing and take it under advisement. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Unanimous. Thanks, Seth. Thank you, Seth. Thank, Thank you, Raul. Oh, I forgot. Thanks, Raul. <laughs> you
called him Mike. I didn't call him Mike. <laughs> yeah, actually you did. I called Raul Mike. I think he called Seth Mike, but he called somebody Mike. I didn't call you Mike, did I? Mean, no, no she did. Mike. We have it on tape. <laughs> All right. Barletta Cape Properties Limited Partnership, 19 and 21 Noshan Way, Falmouth, for permission to repair the existing stone riprap, stone groins, concrete walkways, boat ramp, make improvements to the existing stone retaining walls, timber access stairs, mitigation, restoration plannings, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. I'll save any of my questions until after Raul's or Mike's presentation. <laughs> I would never do that to you. I do have one question on this window. And here's another beautiful site. Yeah. Listen, we live in a beautiful town. Yes. What a home. Yeah. I saw Steve out on this site. <laughs> I usually run into Betsy. Good evening, for the record, Raul Lizardi from Home Summer Graph, representing the applicant. The applicant, Barletta K Properties Limited Partnership. The property, again, like the prior project, is two, two addresses, number 19 and number 21, National Way. Um, the project is a shoreline protection structure repair work and the construction of a new beach access in the form of a stair over the coastal bank and proposed mitigation or restoration plantings. The resources, land under the ocean, land containing shellfish, coastal beach, coastal bank, land subject to coastal stone flowage, and a velocity zone. All the work proposed is within the resource buffer zone um, A and within the coastal resource areas, in particular, the coastal bank and the groins, which are part of land under the ocean. All the existing um, jetties and revetments on the shoreline have been licensed. So there's a license in record for this property, for both of these properties. This property has been issued, or, or this repair for these jetties and seawall have been issued two prior order of conditions, one in 1988, one in 1995, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the project has not taken place, um, so we're here a third time to obtain another order of condition to repair these jetties. Um, some of the major damage to the jetties happened after Hurricane um, Bob, 1991. In particular, the damages to this um, westerly jetty. There's a section of the stones that have shifted and a section of the walking concrete cap that has been taken away in these two areas. So the proposed work for the westerly jetty is to install chink stones and fill all the voids on that jetty and also reconstruct that portion of, of the concrete walkway. The entire walkway will be recapped with concrete. There's also a section here that's a boat ramp, concrete boat ramp. In the past, the prior two Orders of condition, it was called to be rebuilt in kind. Approximately a third, uh, or a more, probably more than a third of the ramp is buried in sand. Um, but the jetty actually goes beyond to what's actually visible nowadays. Um, the jetty is all cracked. Um, some little pieces of concrete have disappeared. But the intention is to rebuild it in the same footprint of the license and the permits. The mid jetty, the proposed work is to recap the concrete walk, um, not extending any of the stonework, chinking the jetty where there is voids and where there is needs for additional stones. Most of the major stones, the larger stones on both jetties are there. So what we're doing is just chinking the voids with smaller stones. There's also a section of the existing riprap towards the easterly side, northeasterly side, that has slumped. That area is proposed to be rebuilt. The portion on the beach that's been slumping is going to be rebuilt with um, 
riprap stones. Then there's going to be a walkway similar to what's there. And then there's going to be the vertical cut granite stones similar to the rest of the, of the seawall. There's a portion above where we're proposing the vertical granite stones that is currently, gran um, currently riprap stones that is not going to need additional riprap. That area is going to be in place, replaced with plantings. So there's some gain of vegetation above the new cut stones. This property currently has a walking path, but it's too steep for the current owner. So we're proposing to replace the walking path, planting the path with some shrubs, and relocating with a new stair um, that goes down the bank and access the same concrete path down below. Something that we noticed when we were putting together this application, back when we did the prior two permits, we noticed and we advised the client that the edge of clearing had shifted. So there's an area here that in my color graphic I show vertical stripes. That area is to revegetate an area that was vegetated back in the early 90s. Um, and I believe even in 2000s. So this is an area that has since been developed. We're proposing to recapture that area as plantings with indigenous shrubs. Then there's an area here that is shown on my graphic with horizontal stripes. That's an area on prior orders of condition that was called out to be planted with indigenous plantings. So we're still calling it to be planted with indigenous plantings. This is also the area that we're using as the construction axis to, to get to the revetment and to the um, initial part of the growings and the boat ramp. A section of this westerly jetty is going to be worked up by a barge. There's enough depth on that westerly side, and the barge can get access to it, and they can do all the work that they need with some of the repair work. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thanks, Roel. Jen. Roel, I have a question on the boat ramp. Why? I mean, there's no access to the boat ramp from the other property. There's just that little teeny path. So what's the, I, I guess, what I'm concerned is it's like, and I dug down with my foot, so I know it, part of it, and part of it's all broken up. But what's the purpose of rebuilding the boat ramp? I get the revetments, and I get the, the jetties, and that, that, that's fine. It's just the boat ramp, just, I'm just like, why? Um, obviously, it's not being used as a boat launching pad. No. Um, but they do want to keep it. Um, don't know exactly the purpose of the use, but... For some history, these two properties plus the other property used to be all one property. There used to be a larger um, path, um, a travel way, that went all the way from the street to that boat ramp. So there was a time where people were launching boats there. Okay. But um, that property is not owned by this applicant anymore, right. and that path is pretty much closed in with a dune system right now. Right. So the property from this point back, we're not proposing to do any work, and it includes about a third of the existing ramp. Oh, ramp. yeah, that was, that was my other question. So the por portion of the ramp and the jetty on that other property not you're worked. not touching? No. So they're going to do a, a cross socket at that point and then work from there off. That even makes less sense to me, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. It's, it's property rights, so they, they currently don't have the rights to work on that portion. No, no, I, no I get that, but again, it goes back to why do the boat ramp. But anyway, okay. Um, that's it. I mean, a lot of this stuff does need to be repaired. I mean, they're in pretty rough shape. I, my major question was just why the boat ramp. It's nice to see that you're going to be replanting the area that should be planted. Don't say me. <laughs> I know your client's here. It's being yes. called out for. Yes. But it's being called so out. So that that's nice to see. And Steve can talk about how we went down the really scary path where the new stairs is going to be. So. 
<laughs> right, the, the, the stairs is actually not on the same path. We actually yeah. found that it was better access to shift it yeah, well, about near five that. feet yeah. left. Yeah, okay. So That's we'll, it. we'll shift and to it, Steve and you can tell us about your adventure. You're going to have a special condition that do you have a contractor chosen yet? Not yet. There are two contractors um, providing quotes for the owner. Local? They're CAPE contractors, Cape, Okay. Yes. So you will see a special condition just because of site access and everything and just the, the all the work that has to be done out there, you will see a special condition that I meet with the contractors, either Mark or I, out there prior to them to start a work. Okay? Yep. Steve. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was going to recommend that access to the existing <laughs> path be, be blocked off. It, it reminded me of our presentation on the knob, where they were talking about the paths that evolve over time. But yeah, I shouldn't have done it. Um, and again, the only other question I have is why would you bother doing the boat ramp, which apparently you don't have access to? I, I think it would be good to remove the large pieces of concrete that have. Yeah. Um, broken away, but uh, it, it's obviously the owner's prerogative, but I, I see no functional use for it. it. Is it because of a previous order had you had required you to restructure it or? No, it was requested at the prior two orders of conditions, but those have seen expired, so they're not valid. Um, but the current owner still wants to reconstruct it. Um, I'm pretty sure if, if he, during construction, he changes his mind and decides to remove it, he can just um, contact staff, and I don't think there'll be a problem with just removing it, but at the moment, they just want to rebuild it. It's their, their choice, but I see no functional use for yeah, it. Yeah, that's that do, Steve. I don't see a functional use for it. There's nothing there. What a pretty house. Comparatively, Bravo, from 1988, when they originally got an order of conditions, right? How much, how worse has this whole thing gotten? would you say? I'm just curious, it's more curiosity. Hiding from your questions. Hmm? He's, He's hiding from your questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we, created the, we, we worked on the plans from 1988, and I can tell you that this opening was about half, half the opening, and over here there was a couple of stones that were displaced. So that was 1938. I'm sorry, 1995. Well, okay, 95. So it, but it goes all the way back to 88. So quite a bit of difference from that period of time. So there has been some additional shifting of the stones yeah. and loss of the capstones. But the main stones are still there. So the main jetty structure is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the smaller one, the looser ones are coming off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the, what the, the boat ramp thing goes through my mind too, but you know, uh, who knows where you're going to go with it? And uh, it's there is a certain degree of logic you, you actually to it repairing away, it at this point. You lose that part of the license. And right. Yeah. So no, I have I no other questions. I, I just so I have I a think. question. Does Does anybody know the history of this complex? When was this first? I mean, this is, this is an interesting little complex in the velocity zone in a high energy area of Buzzards Bay. But, I mean, it's the kind of thing you might have seen built, you know, the early 1900s. Right. Is it that old? Does anybody know? I don't know. I know the licenses took place in the 90s, and the orders that we have are from the 80s and 90s. Uh, but when it was built, I don't Betsy, know. if you're really that interested, we can go back through the historic aerials and try to pinpoint it. Well, for I you. am. I mean, this area. We was can go developed. back to around the 60s, I know the, even 50s. We can go back. On my more. street, who bought land there in the fifth, more than 60 years ago, also looked at areas here. So I know this was developed a long time ago. Um, I, I, I mean, do we'll say, talk to Bob. I, I, All right. I can say that. We have another project forthcoming, a um, couple of addresses um, east, and we have an aerial from 1970-something. Right. I think it's 1975. And this 
You can this see it. This work has been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like to look, see if it's back in the Excuse areas of here from the, from the 50s. Um, the other thing is, when I was out there, it was high tide, and some of it was under <laughs> underwater. There, I mean, it was, it was calm, but it was kind of sloshing over in a couple of places mm -hmm. that, you're, that you're planning to repair. Yeah, we, know, we understand, and the, the applicant understand that some of these areas can only be worked during low tides. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we have another information? I will make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. I second that. Do I have one thingy again? Got that, Susan? Yeah. Jane started, but she was <laughs> too quiet. Yeah. Speak up there. Right. Um, any questions from the audience? <laughs> Okay, all in favor of the motion on the table, close this hearing and uh, take it under advisement, say aye. 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 <laughs> I heard you. Did you vote? That was Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Unanimous, so moved. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Good night. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh, that's Betsy's line. Thank you. Okay, continued request for a hearing under a notice of intent. Uh, the first one is Shirley Rothwell, 28 Drift Road, West Falmouth. And that's continued till. Who has it written down? 614. 614. And then yeah, next yeah. is John Ziza, 82 Waterside Drive, which is continued till. 719. July 19th. All right. Shelby and Janet. Mudari, 4 Nichols Road, Wakoit, for permission to replace, reconfigure, and expand the existing seasonal pier ramp floats, 4-inch okay. post, 4, 4-inch post, 4, 3-inch pipe pilings with a fixed timber deck with 10, 10-inch 10 pilings to, and, and to install electrical and water service. Jen. Yes, the quorum is everybody but Jamie. Everybody but Jamie. That's going to be a problem. Why? What? Because yes. I'm not going to be here to vote it. Courtney. <laughs> That's okay. uh, yeah, going to be voted on the seventh. Okay, hang right. on, hang mm -hmm. on, everybody. I won't be here on the seventh either. Who's here for this? You're here for this. Could we continue this hearing? My answer. You're here. Can we continue this hearing? Because um, we need to have a quorum. Okay, hang on. Betsy, you're back on the 14th. Well, I'm back from a Europe yeah, on the 14th. Late. I'm going to try to get here late for one of Mike's projects. But I'll I might not make 14th. it. One, two, and then I don't get in until 4.30. <clears throat> Who knows how long it will take to get through immigration. When are you leaving, Beth? When am I leaving? Saturday. Steve, Ross, Mary, Kristen, Betsy, Courtney. That's what I have. I, I don't know what you guys want me to do. Um, Can we continue to the 7th and then there'll be a quorum other than me? That is going to be up to Well, I know because I won't be here on the 7th. How about the 14th? Can we continue to the 14th? I'd like... I think we're going to have to, but can do about the business. I, I, we can table and I can just explain this to my client. Uh, we have to vote orders and conditions. Okay, can we? Yes, we have table? other business. You can, right. We can table yeah, it and explain right it to your client. We'll chat for a minute. Okay. So, so I'm clear, <clears throat> as of right now, the quorum is everyone but Jamie, and you need four people on a quorum. Correct. And but on the 14th, maybe somebody else on the quorum will be here. Yeah, we, right. we don't have to count that we opened this tonight. Right. So if we were going forward tonight, it would be a futile effort because on the date that you would, you'd have the order prepared and when you went to vote it, you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. So and, wouldn't I, and I won't be here, so. Right, so that all being said, statistically, what's the best date we could ask for? That the odds are best, the seventh or on the seventh, Courtney won't be here? And who else is on the yeah. forum, Jen? 
Steve, Russell, Mary, Kristen, Betsy, Courtney. I mean, the other alternative is can can they wave the? No, they Courtney, can't just go 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 there. Go there. The seventh, the seventh would work if we knew Kristen was going to be here, but. So that would be the soonest, and Kristen would be here, and then that quorum would be. When's Mary back? Everyone but Mary Jim. will be back. Well, she wasn't on the quorum, was so she? Be, yeah. Yes, yeah, she is. Oh, Mary, Mary will be back. Russ Mary will be, will be back. It. Russ. So the seventh is. Steve. Uh, 14th. Mary. Kristen. Yeah. So there's mm -hmm. a high likelihood on the seventh there'll be at least four on the quorum. Yes. All right. Can we just table it for a second? Absolutely, yeah. Mike. Sorry and about the that. Fourteenth. Probably yeah. they'll all be here, so. Okay. All right. All right. So we want to table this? Table. Motion to table. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so move. I'm going to leave this out. Vote orders and conditions. 23 Sunset can. Point Road. Okay, hang on. Are all these letters? We already did. The last one. 62 John yep. Parker. Yeah. Okay. Where is this? All right. So what are we on? Sunset Point. Oh, that's that crappy lot in North Falmouth. Yes. <laughs> Hang on, guys. Yes. Yeah, we have a crappy lot. Everybody would oh, give yeah. me their vacation time. It would be like so super awesome. Steve, <laughs> Jamie, Betsy, Courtney. <laughs> so we got to look at the waterfall. Ready? I don't have any notes that put anything. Um, I don't have any notes. Yeah, I remember this one. Um, no, this was um, Tom Bunker's presentation. Yeah, this was straightforward, right? Right, it much is. Mm-hmm. What is that? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How did Teresa do? No, it's a, the raise and rebuild, moving the house back. I believe it looks like Blue Flax did the plant list on either side. Um, she had them grouped on the sides instead of stretched along the revetment to better protect the plants. Yeah, that's a tough area. That yeah. is a tough area. Um, they added the little circular patio. It's beautiful, but... Yeah, there we go. Okay. Your motion? I'll move. I thought we were... Okay. I think he moved. Okay. I already did it. I'll second. I wish you guys weren't listening again. I listen. A motion on the second. I second on the table. I thought. To, <laughs> to accept this disgust. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Yeah, 164 Acapescat Road. Same quorum. Does anybody make a comment on me? Hang on. Let me go with that one. Yep, that was the dock and the replanting by Cape and Islands. The dock was no issue. The replanting was done to deal with a, a buffer that had kind of been overzealously disappeared over the years. But um, this was Matt Costa's plan. Um, he followed all the recommendations from Mark oh, yeah, and I, so that was right. it was fine. Yep. So okay. moved. Could I have a second? second? Motion is second to accept as discussed. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, so move. And the next one's the knob. And the next one right. is the knob with move the different approval. points. Um, I went out there, I walked that site extensively with Katie and Woods Hole Group. We reviewed all the different areas, the different options to, to address the different areas. So they they did a nice plan. Yeah, um, they're probably going to need a multi-year order to implement this. We'll give them three years now, and then we can extend it. But they they're going to need to extend this order of conditions because they're not going to have the funding yeah, it's gonna be to do. It's an ongoing, ongoing maintenance management. of the knob. Right. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Same so, time. yes. So Steve made a motion. I did. May I have a second? second? Got that? Who seconded? You didn't hear it? Yeah, I didn't hear it. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Now I'm afraid. All in favor say aye. 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 All I'm opposed. A flag. Unanimous. So moved. What? I have a question. I use a flag. You have a question? Or this is, has nothing to do with these uh, this set of orders. I'm just looking ahead to the seventh because that's our next meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Is, yes, that's correct. This is when I normally would vote. Orders well, yes, yes we're going to have to do that. So we're going to have to do a special meeting. Betsy's not back until the 17th. So what I'm going to have to do is um, schedule a special meeting with the four of you to vote orders of conditions. It's, it's because you're not meeting next week because it's the week of Memorial Day. Right, so, and I won't be here on the 7th. So. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we can either schedule that now or we can schedule so we can have... Courtney send out something and you guys let me know what your availability is. I'm going to tell you right now, Steve, these two need to do it fairly early in the morning, mm -hmm. as in like 7, 7.30, Mid the morning. latest. Okay. Is that okay? Courtney, you're just going to have to Thursday's, deal. Thursday's best, though. Thir <laughs> not a, not a one of my grandchildren. 7.30 work for you, Jamie? Russ, that's, that, would that work for you? 7 o'clock would be no problem. I'm here anyway. You already said yeah. Thursday is best. Can everybody do it next Thursday? So next Thursday. Yeah. So yeah. wait. We make that at 7. Yeah. Can we, can you guys all right with 7? I'm fine. Yeah. For you, thrilled. Russell, of course I'd get here at 7 a.m. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm easy. I'm all in right. the land of the retired. <laughs> this Thursday next When I call you at 10 o'clock, you're not Thursday. even up sometimes. Yes. It's the first. You won't. That's fine. I'll have Courtney take the notes. That's okay. I'll have Courtney take the notes. At 7 a.m. Yeah. So, so guys, if I schedule Courtney um, post meeting, Russ, Jamie, and vote OOC Thursday. June 1st, 7 a.m. 7 a.m., correct? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll yeah. have her post that and um, send you guys a reminder. And I'll just have her take the minutes for us while we're there. That'll be fine. Or I'll take the minutes. It's fine. Cool. And I'm going to be that efficient. I'm surprised. Um, motion to untable. Uh, are we back on the table? Yes. yes. Not yet. Oh, wait. We have to yes. untable you, Mike. Second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> Unanimous so moved. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Madam Chairman, we'd like to request a continuance to June seventh. Sounds you. good. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Wait a second. One of you that's I'd like nice to make of you a motion to, to what? To continue this hearing at the request of the applicant until June seventh. Second. <laughs> Got that? Yeah. And they will have a full quorum then. Okay. We'll make sure we well, that's what I'm... From the initial hearing. Yeah, yeah from the initial, from the initial right. hearing, yeah. Um, okay. Is there, are, are, are there any comments? I mean... Can you have public comments? No. You can't have public comments for a continuance? Oh, yeah, I mean, I get you. Yes, I guess. No, but you guys aren't going... No, no because not on the project. Just if you want to talk about the continuance. Oh, yes, you can talk about the continuance, but not about the project. Just because I see people sitting there. Right. Um, yeah. Steve's wondering. I, I, I stole this thunder. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. All in favor of the motion on the table, which is continued this to June 7th, say aye. Okay. Aye. All opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thanks very much. Sorry. Thank you. Guys, we apologize. Motion to adjourn. Second. What do they do with the action? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Unanimous. That's the loudest all of you talked all night.